Good morning, everyone. Gracie and I hope you're having a wonderful day. We are expecting a full day of thunderstorms here in southern Pennsylvania. And also on the agenda for this week, all the trees in the orchard that aren't fruit trees are coming down a new fence and I'm going to say fence in quotes because I have a surprise coming for you all is going to be installed me and my husband are going to be getting around to that and also a new insta hedge is going in so this is almost a final look at how the garden looks and especially the exterior there where you see all the bird cherries and the rows of Sharon's and I wanted to show you all the cut flowers and the raised bed too before I go ahead and cut them this morning. So let's first go ahead and take a look at these poppies. It's about 6.15 now. So after I cut as many flowers as possible, I'm also going to come back out and corral these poppies. Hopefully they won't fall over. Also, I can't wait to show you the sweet peas. But these are the rose feathers poppies that we sewed together in March. And aren't they beautiful? It's interesting because they start out a much more vibrant hot pink, like you're seeing here. But in just about a day, the color really changes to more of a muted pink and the center goes light pink. So I think we have three different kinds of poppies in this raised bed. And so rose feathers is first to bloom. The lily that you see there in the background that's about as tall as me this year is Regale. And it's so beautiful and so fragrant. This poppy also changes colors. This is frosted salmon poppy, and this is how it starts. It starts out this white, very light pink color, and it changes fairly quickly to salmon. There are sweet peas on all the trellises. They're all doing good, but definitely the ones in the front and the center are doing the best because they get the most sun. I think I'll have to put the name of this variety on the screen because I don't really recall what it is. But this dark purple variety is what Grace, what are you doing? Grace is eating some grass. Oh, her tummy must be upset. I think that's what happens when you eat taco shells in the middle of the night. You get an upset belly, don't you? <laughs> So now let's get an update on how the saponaria and Asiatic lily interplanting is doing. I'm definitely going to do either this pairing again or something very similar. A lot of good things happened here. I have the saponaria planted very, very close together. You can see uh, maybe it's only an inch or two inches apart. But last year was the first time I grew saponaria and I felt like the stems were very, very big, almost too big to work into an arrangement. But planting them much closer to together gives me a much better stem head. So here's a single stem right there. Easier to work into a bouquet. And even though it makes the stem smaller, it's still a strong stem. Now, here's something interesting. So there is the Royal Sunset Asiatic Lily. And I definitely thought that the tips of this lily were going to be pinky purple. But this is definitely red, friends. Red right to orange. So I thought that Royal Sunset was going to work well, not only with Saponaria, but also with the Snapdragons that I'll show you in a moment. So I'm not sure if this is the way Royal Sunset looks or if I got the wrong bulb, I'm just not really sure. So let me know if you've grown Royal Sunset. Is this the way it's supposed to look? Um, I would not grow it again now that I've seen it in real life, if this is truly the way it looks, because this is going to be very hard to make this work with the other colors that I'm growing. 
The interplanting of the pleurum and Orlea worked out really well. This bed, which is our Cool Flowers quilt work bed, is starting to decline. I don't think that I will bother to corral that. I'll just kind of let it pass. I have new trays under my lighting system to replace all these cool flowers. We have a little bit of larkspur we can cut, but let's travel over to see the snapdragons. So here we have Potomac Purple. Behind that we have Apple Blossom, and look how tall those Apple Blossom are. I bet they're almost five feet tall. So these Snapdragons are in a four by four inch spacing. Someone was asking me about why I like the four inch spacing better than six or even nine. This year I'm just getting really, really strong stems, thicker stems. And there are some that were just accidentally pinched in the back. And those are still maybe two weeks away from blooming. So I love this. I love this color. I also saw some questions about thrips. So I have some thrips in the front on the, is it Costa or Costa? I'm never sure, but the apricot. So one thing I've noticed about thrips, and I'm not sure if this is just a coincidence or if there's any consistent truth to this, but I've noticed that colors like yellow, red, and dark purple are generally attacked by thrips first, whereas light pinks and light purples generally are hit later on. I'm not sure why that is. I'm not sure if that happens to other people or not, so let us know your thoughts on that. But definitely with gladiolas, it seems to be the case. Definitely don't grow any more yellow gladiolas. So here's our apple blossom snapdragons. Really beautiful. Don't see any thrips present here, but don't feel bad if you are seeing thrips because like I say, I do have them on the apricot and I'll have to rethink that, that color for future years. Now I'm still debating on whether or not I want to leave these snapdragon plants in the ground and get another fall harvest if I want to pull them up or if I want to interplant around them. I'm leaning more towards interplanting, so I just need to figure out exactly what I want to interplant around them. I have straw flower, sunflowers, and a tray of zinnias going. I don't think those would be good companions for the snapdragon plant. So I might go ahead and give another listen to Jenny Love's No-Till Flower podcast on interplanting and see if I can get some suggestions from her. So here's a view from back here in the raised beds. And I think it's nice to have the deck from this angle too. These sweet peas are doing really well. They're about halfway up this seven foot trellis now. Saving Grace Dahlia, which is the dahlia I grew from seed last year. Saved the tubers, and now we are working with all of her baby seedlings, has returned to the garden, and isn't she beautiful? Here's a closer look at Regale, and here I have it paired with Ambassador Alliums some blue foliage in the background, a blue shadow fothergilla, and also some of my favorite maroon lilies in the distance. I saw some questions about what is this feathery texture next to the sunflower bench. That's Amsonia, and it normally doesn't look this um, vibrant of a lime color this early on in the season. I'm assuming this is just stress from how dry we've been because it hasn't rained in over a month, which is unheard of here. I'm not sure if that's a record, but it certainly seems like it. This new stone rug, and it's a little bit dirty right now because I put in some more Amsonia on the side there, so sorry about that. But this new area here is 
one of my new favorite areas in the garden and I'm so glad because this is an area that I always struggled with. I felt like it was never working. It served as kind of this weird central point where the main flower walk kind of ended, but I didn't have an ending point for the main flower walk. So what I want to do next, and we might be able to get around to some of this this year, I've talked about wanting to remove this burning bush and replace it with oak leaf hydrangeas. And here's a backed up view of the bench. This was one of those great unexpected views. It was unplanned and I think it has really elevated this area. I am contemplating a wall fountain over here where the hummingbird sign is. So let me know your thoughts on that. Nothing fancy, just something that looks old and artistic. But I think it would be nice to have the sound of water over here. And I'm thinking a cement wall fountain might do the trick because we do have a window there. So I am able to run electricity out the window. And you know what, isn't it cool how you can see the elegant Sam and Clarkia there in the distance? So this is just a really wonderful view. Maybe I should put some seating back here. I think once the new Insta Hedge is in, I'll have a much better perspective on seating, permanent seating, should I say, for this entire garden, because we will finally have privacy back here. <laughs> I am just so excited. So here's one last look at Annabelle standing upright before the storm. Lots of spiky, airy texture going on over here with the cat mint, the bupleurum, the elegant salmon clarkia, and it is hard to see the bachelor's buttons hidden in the distance. But if I turn us this way, you might be able to see that the main flower walk looks like it is in distress, mainly due to the grass. The grass has basically gone dormant, especially all the new grass in the front is just completely brown. So I'll be interested to see once it starts raining again, will this all come back to life or will I have to reseed it? I'm not sure. I think it will go back to a mix of clover and fescue just because if this is going to happen more often than not this drought situation that we're having this year, I may have to rethink grass pathways altogether, which is something I never heard or never thought of in the past. Now it's only about 6.30 now. You can already hear how much traffic we get here. And I'll be interested to see if the new hedge helps that at all. And here we have a backed up view of the main flower walk and you can just see what the grass is looking like at this point. I'm really undecided about what exactly to do with this brick edging. I'm not sure if I should continue it on and put it around all the borders. If I should stop it at the catmint, that's what I'm inclined to do, is have it disappear behind the catmint. It's definitely not correct right now. Something is wrong with it, but I can't figure out if I need to add more stone, less stone, lots more stone <laughs> let me know your thoughts on that hardscaping is definitely not my strong suit i've been getting some questions about this lime colored shrub here this is a winecraft gold smoke bush but that's an update on how the main flower walk is doing i'm afraid it really is in distress this year and I'd be interested to know if some of you used to have grass and if you've had to replace it due to changes in climate and go with something like gravel instead, because I am starting to consider that. Here is a close up on the Clarkia in full flower. The doubles really are beautiful and it is a nice true salmon color. I have been sticking in a stem here and there into bouquets. I don't think I'll grow it again, but it is a nice color. I like how it blooms in late May, early June. I don't know, I'll have to look and see if there's more colors. 
Maybe if there was a light lavender, I would go for it again. The other nice thing about planting this closely is that you can just grab a whole bunch and cut them all at the same time. I still can't believe how tall these apple blossoms are. I'm gonna cut them above three sets of leaves. I mean, that is just so amazing. The stem length, the stem length on these are crazy. Once we get inside, I'll put these snapdragons in a taller vase because they will bend toward the light and their stems will get all wonky. Even overnight, if I condition them in the dark, they will still kind of curve and lean towards that open window. So I've started wrapping them overnight like you would peonies that are going into storage to prevent that from happening. Look at the stem length on these. That is crazy. I really like this color, the apple blossom. I don't need all this stem length, so we'll go ahead and cut some of it off. The Bupleurum is in full flower now. So it will hold up really well at the heat of the flower stand. Now that the yellow flowers are in full bloom, such a great filler. I think it looks just like eucalyptus, but with these beautiful lemony flowers. So we're taking the first cuts off of our spring sown Sweet William now. So it took until the second week of June to catch up with our fall planted Sweet William that started blooming in mid-May. And as soon as I start to see a few flowers appear on the top of these Sweet William, I can go ahead and pick them. And they will continue to open in the base. Oh, got a dandelion back here. They'll continue to open in the vase. And they have just such a great vase life. Two good weeks on Sweet William. So here's what we gathered before the storm. And I just love seeing those poppies and all of these beautiful airy flowers in the background. So we have the Boot Plurum, the Pink Beauty Saponaria. We have Potomac Lavender, Potomac Apple Blossom, a little bit of Larkspur in there. We have what we are calling Royal Sunset Lilies until further notice. I did grab a little bit of Feverfew that was starting to lean into the path. And I'll also go ahead and pick a bunch of Forsythia from the front. But for now, I can just feel in the air and see the leaves turning over. I think we better run inside and I'm so excited to get some rain. We really, really need it. So friends, here we have it. I think I like the Royal Sunset now that I have it paired with all the other elements we have gathered from the garden. I think I also need to get some risers for the back of my stand here. Oh, hold for traffic. I do have them raised up about six inches, but it's still a little bit hard to see that there are two in the back also. Good morning, friends. It's 6.30 a.m. Wednesday now. We were able to sell two bouquets before all the rain came and everything is just loving the rain. As expected, our quilt work bed of cool flowers completely collapsed, but that's okay. 
I have a flat of sunflowers ready to replace them. Lots of poppies bloomed in two days time. And today we're expecting more rain. So I'm going to do essentially the same exact harvest that we did together just two days ago because just in two days, we have more of the royal sunset blooming, more snapdragons, and so we can put together at least four more arrangements with the same exact flowers that we just did. And yesterday, I was at Hershey Park with my daughter, niece, and husband, so I wasn't able to get to these royal sunsets prior to them opening, but we'll get all this harvested. We'll get the flower stand set up, and then hopefully we'll sell some in between all the rain. And I think all the remaining snapdragons are ready for harvest now. So friends, I think I'm gonna wrap up today's video here. I'll keep you updated as this poppy bed starts to really produce. I believe I might have a seed mix up with the black peony poppy because it looks like what I'm getting is Lauren's grape, but only one is bloomed so far. So we'll just wait and see. But I wanna thank you all so much for hanging out in the garden and at the flower stand with me for the last few days. I wanna wish you a wonderful day. And of course, happy gardening. Bye.